Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about tensor algebra. Tensor is defined as the property of a state that is invariant with coordinate rotation. So we have two conditions. It has to be a property of state and also it has to be invariant with coordinate rotation, which means that if we rotate our coordinate, our tensor should not change. Uh, tensors could have uh, different orders. The zero order tensors only require one variable for their full representation. And we refer to zero tensors as scalars. So temperature, mass, density, length are examples of zero order tensors or scalars. They only require one value. I can say 70 degrees and, and that would be it. I just need one value to fully describe that. One feature of zero order tensor is that they do not depend on any particular coordinate. So they satisfy the tensor definition or invariant with coordinate rotation, but also they go further. They do not depend on any coordinate at all. Uh, the, the next order of uh, tensor is first order tensor. So they require three variables, three values for their full description. We refer to first order tensors as vectors. We know, we already know the examples of vectors such as velocity, acceleration, force, a moment. Uh, here you can see a vector with its component. So it has three components in X direction, Y and Z uh, in a three-dimensional Cartesian uh, coordinate. And uh, so always students ask me what is not a tensor? So anything that does not satisfy the definition. So here these components Vx the component in x direction, the component in y direction and z direction, these components are not gonna be tensors because they are not independent of coordinate rotation. If you rotate your coordinate, if you change x and y and z, your, uh, these values are gonna change. Therefore, they are not uh, tensors. Second order tensors require nine variables or nine values for their full characterization. An example of second order tensors are stress and strain for mechanical engineering students. So now, by now, we should be able to come up with a rule to find the required values uh, for each tensor. That's three to the power of tensor order. If the tensor order is zero, which means that three to the power of zero, one, we only need one value. If it is, if the tensor order is one, three to the power of one would be three or in this case, second order tensor, so we need nine values. And uh, here, it's a, we show a tens stress tensor by a three by three matrix. It has nine components, same thing for strain. And if you wanna physically show uh, the, the components of tensor, stress tensor, we can use this uh, cubic element. Uh, so here, the notation is very important for stresses. The first index is referred to the surface that the, tense, that the stress is being applied to, and the second index is indicating the direction. So each surface is known by its normal. So the normal to this surface is two. The normal to this surface would be one, and the normal to this surface would be three. So this surface is known as surface two. So all the in first indices would be two. And then the second index would indicate the direction. So it's in the direction of third axis, so that would be sigma two, three. Here is in the direction of the first axis, so that would be sigma two, one. And uh, we know that for stresses, we have symmetry. So sigma one, two and sigma two, one are the same. Sigma one, three and sigma three, one are the same. Same thing for sigma two, three and three, two. So technically we do not need nine components for stresses. We only need six components. But in a general case, uh, it's a three by three matrix. And writing the stresses in uh, matrix form has the advantage for us uh, because we can easily find the principal stresses. So the principal stresses uh, are the eigenvalues of this matrix. In MATLAB, if I want to use MATLAB, I just need to write EIG that indicates eigenvalue. And 
let's say my matrix sigma, and then that gives me the eigenvalue of uh, my stress matrix, which are the principal stresses. So that's one advantage of writing stresses in a matrix form. Uh, for the strains, we use the term engineering strain and tensor strain. Uh, they are dealing with the same concept, they are both shear strains. Uh, but whenever we are talking about engineering strain, uh, we are talking about the change in angle, the total change in the original angle for both this angle and this angle. And we refer it by gamma xy. Tensor strains is much easier in our tensor algebra to deal with epsilon xy, that's why it's called tensor strain. And it is just half of our engineering strain. That's the only uh, difference between the two. And it is refer to each of these angles. Now let's go to higher order tensors. Let's go to fourth order tensors. Uh, according to our rule, there are fourth order tensors, so they require 81 variables for their descriptions. Three to the power of four would be 81. So that's a lot of values that we need to uh, determine to be able to fully describe fourth order tensors. The examples of fourth order tensors are elasticity and compliance tensors. They relate stress strains in Hooke's law. So elasticity or stiffness tensor matrix is referred to as C because it's a fourth order. That's why you see four indices, C, I, J, K, L here, relating our stresses to our strains. So this is a second order tensor, this is a fourth order tensor, and this is the second order tensor. And I, J, K, L is changing from one to three. In a matrix format, we can write sigma equals C epsilon. And we already know with one dimensional uh, elasticity uh, tensor. The one dimensional elasticity tensor is just simply E, elastic modulus. If we only have one dimension, that's all we have, one component. If you are only dealing with one dimension. But in a general case, you can see that it has 81 components that we are gonna uh, see later. And compliance matrix is just the inverse of elasticity matrix. So if you rearrange epsilon ij would be equal to sij k sigma kl. One interesting thing is that stiffness matrix is solved with S, but the symbol is C. The compliance matrix start with C, but the symbol is S. So that's very confusing. Uh, the Latin word for stiffness and compliance is started with S and C, so that's why uh, we still use that symbol, but make sure that you don't uh, confuse the two. And um, this is our stresses are second order tensors, so they have nine components. Our strains are second order tensors, they have nine components. The elasticity tensor and compliance tensors, they are fourth order tensors, so they have uh, 81 components. For writing 81 components, for writing a fourth order tensor, uh, we have to refer to matrices. I mean, it's a fourth order tensor. Usually matrices are great for second order tensors. So we can relate the first index to the row and the second index to the column, uh, but we have no way we have to write it in the matrix form as well. That's why we change the stresses and the strains into a column matrix. That way we could actually write it in a, in a matrix uh, uh, form. So that's a general case of elasticity tensor. But we can simplify our stresses, our strains, and therefore our elasticity and compliance matrices by the fact that our stresses are symmetric. So sigma 2, 1 is the same as sigma 1, 2. And sigma 3, 1 is the same as sigma 1, 3. So we don't need to write all of them. Let's get rid of the ones that are symmetric. And then use a contracted notation. So instead of dealing with nine components of stress, we only deal with six components of stress. And the order is important when we are developing our uh, 
contracted notation. It starts from here. Sigma one one two two three three, and then goes up here. Two three one three, and then the last one is one two. If you want to remember the order here. And uh, because it's a column matrix, we are not going to have two index associated with it. We are going to change it to only one index, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's how we rename our stresses. So if you see sigma four, that's the shear stress, two, three. That's an out of plane shear stress. Same thing for strains. For strains, we have both gamma and epsilon. Again, just gamma is uh, twice as epsilon. Epsilon is a tensor strain, gamma is uh, uh, our engineering strain. So using this contracted notation, we can simplify our elasticity and compliance matrices. So we can uh, now write them in a six by six uh, matrices, relating six strains to six strains that will be our compliance uh, matrix. For the case of isotropic material, it gets simpler and a lot of components are zero because we have no coupling and uh, all values that we are dealing with are either elastic modulus, Python ratio or G shear modulus. And these are related. You only need two out of three to describe an isotropic material but that's the general elasticity tensor for isotropic material. If you want to find an epsilon xx, that would be the first row multiplied by the stresses. If you have multiple stresses and you want to find the, the strain in x direction, you have to use this matrix. You can see these zero components, which means that the shear stresses are not going to create normal strains. That's feature of isotropic material, we have no coupling. When there is no shear stress, there is not going to be a shear strain. And this is elasticity relating stresses with the strains. And again, in this function of E, nu, and G, here we have replaced G with E and nu, so we only deal with the two independent variable that, that we have. So here is an exercise to make sure that we know how to use uh, these tensors. If only axial loading is applied to a steel bar, find all components of strain. So if you only have axial loading, which means that the rest of our strains are zero, let's say all of these are zero. What are the values of strains? Epsilon XX would be the first row times the first uh, the stress column. So that would be epsilon xx would be one E times sigma xx and the rest are zero. Epsilon yy would be negative nu E times sigma xx. And epsilon zz uh, would be negative nu E times sigma xx, and the rest would be zero. That's something that we know according to Python ratio, but we just want to make sure that you can use uh, these elasticity and compliance tensors uh, correctly. Uh, 